Hey, Radians here. In this video, we'll create a fully functional and visually appealing combo box component using React and TypeScript without relying on external component libraries. Our goal is to make it flexible and reusable. To demonstrate its versatility, we'll construct two applications, a country selector and a cryptocurrency input. By the end of this video, you'll have the knowledge to implement your own input with a drop-down list tailored to your project's requirements. You can view a demo on this page, and the complete source code is accessible in the ReactKit repository. You can find all these resources in the description below. Instead of creating a generic reusable component right away, let's focus on a specific use case first. In my productivity app in Cruiser, I needed to incorporate an input for users to select a country for their public profile. To simplify the search process, we will integrate a drop-down list with a search feature. User can type their country's name, and the list will dynamically filter to match the input. Additionally, users can navigate through the list using arrow keys and select a country with the enter key. We also plan to display each country's flag in the list and show the selected country's flag in the input field. Moreover, including a clear button to reset the input would enhance usability. Now let's determine the property that our country input component should accept. The value prop will represent the selected country and can be either a two-letter country code string or null if no country is selected. Additionally, an on-change callback is essential to update this value. You should also consider an optional label prop, which will be displayed above the input field. The user interface for the cryptocurrency input will closely resemble that of the country input, with a few key differences. Instead of displaying a country flag, we will showcase the logo of the cryptocurrency. Additionally, in the drop-down options, we will present both the cryptocurrency symbol and its name, providing a comprehensive and user-friendly selection experience. The properties for the cryptocurrency input mirror those of the country input in many ways. The value prop will indicate the chosen cryptocurrency, which can either be an asset object or null. An asset here is defined as an object with fields such as ID, name and icon. Unlike the country input, which inherently knows all available countries, the cryptocurrency input will require a list of assets provided via the options prop. Similar to the previous component, the label prop remains optional. This component shares several similarities, allowing us to abstract the common logic into a reusable component named fixed options input. This component will cater to selections from a predetermined set of options and will accommodate the following properties. Value and on change. This represents the selected option. We will use a generic type T, making it adaptable to different data types, a string for the country input and an asset object for the cryptocurrency input, placeholder and label, essential attributes for any text input. Options, this prop supplies the list of selectable options. Get option search strings is a function to extract an array of strings from each option, enhancing the search functionality. Get option name retrieves the name of the selected option for display in the input field. Render option identifier is a method for rendering an identifier for the selected option, such as country flag for country input or cryptocurrency icon for cryptocurrency input. Option identifier placeholder is a placeholder for the identifier when no option is selected. For instance, a gray rectangle for the country input and a gray circle for the cryptocurrency input. Here is the implementation of the country input component, which utilizes the fixed options input component. We forward the value on change and label directly to fixed options input. The options are set to the list of country codes. For search functionality, we include only the country name as search string, as users are more likely to search for name rather than code. To obtain the country names, we use a predefined record. The flag is used as a visual identifier for each country. If you're interested in how I generated all the SVGs icon for the flags, you can find details in my previous video about TypeScript code generation. For rendering the options in the dropdown, we employ a helper component named Option Content, which provides a visually appealing layout with the icon on the left and the name on the right. The implementation of the asset input closely mirrors that of the country input with a few distinctions. For displaying the identifier, we use the asset icon component. The search strings include both the name and ID of the asset. Additionally, the render option function is slightly modified to display both the name and ID in the dropdown list. Having outlined all the requirements for our combo box, let's dive into the implementation. Despite the efforts to modularize the code by splitting it into different files, this remains one of those rare components that spans about 200 lines. Let's delve into the structure of our component. We start by enclosing all elements within an input container component. 
This component acts as a label element, thereby enhancing accessibility. We've crafted it using Flexbox to ensure a neat gap between the label text and the input field. Moreover, we've added a transition effect on the color property, employed to change the text color when the input is focused. Inside the input container, we begin with the label, if provided. Next, we utilize the relative row component. Designed as a flexbox element with a relative position, its aligned items property is set to center. This setup guarantees that any absolutely positioned children are horizontally aligned within it. Within the relative row, there are four elements. The first one is the fixed options input identifier wrapper. This wrapper is carefully designed to align the icon perfectly with the input field. We achieve this alignment by setting the wrapper's left property to match the input's pattern. The font side inside this wrapper is consistently defined in the config.ts file, located in the fixed options input folder. This arrangement ensures that when adding an identifier, there is no need for manual size adjustment. Instead, we can use 1am for both width and height. For country flags, which are rectangular, we set their largest dimension to 1am. After the identifier wrapper, we position the text input. Now, this input adapts the text input CSS, which includes all the crucial styling for text fields. Our primary focus here is to fine tune the pattern on both the left and right sides. This adjustment is vital to prevent the text from overlapping with the absolutely positioned icon on the left and the buttons on the right, thereby ensuring a neat and user-friendly interface. When the options become visible, we display the options container. Its placement is managed by the floating UI library, which we will examine shortly. To guarantee that the container appears above other elements on the page, we assign it a Z index. The container is essentially a straightforward div with a defined border and border radius, creating a distant and elegant appearance. Additionally, we set the max height and overflow Y properties. These settings ensure that if the list of options exceed the maximum height, it becomes scrollable, thereby maintaining a user-friendly and accessible interface. In the drop-down list, if there are options that match the input value, we display them accordingly. However, if no matches are found, a message is shown to indicate this. Each option in the list is wrapped with a fixed options input item, a component that essentially styles a div element. We visually distinguish the currently selected item by changing its background color to a color named Mist. For better accessibility, we have defined both row and area selected attributes for each item. To ensure the floating UI library handles these options correctly, each element must have a unique identifier. This is accomplished using the useID hook from React. The last component is the fixed options input buttons, which is displayed as an absolutely positioned flexbox element containing clear and collapse buttons. In a manner akin to the identifier wrapper, we set its right attributes to text input pattern for proper alignment. The clear button is only displayed when the input is not empty. The columns button, on the other hand, is always visible, but its icon changed based on the visibility of the options. Rather than using on click for the toggle button, we opt for on mouse down and on touch start. This is because if we use on click when the options are hidden and the user clicks on the button, the option would briefly show and then hide again. This occurs since we also listen for focus within the label to display the options. And by the time the on click event is triggered, the focus has already shifted to the label. For animating the chevron icon on the collapse button, we encase it in a wrapper and introduce a transition to the internal SVG. This transition is paired with a rotated Z transform, effectively creating a smooth animation effect for the icon. The positioning and keyboard navigation for the dropdown are efficiently encapsulated within the use floating options hook. We initiate by establishing a state for the visibility of options. To enhance ease of use, we rely on the use boolean hook. Next, we set up the positioning of the floating drop-down container using the use floating hook. Our goal is to align the options right below the input field, so we choose bottom start as our placement. We use a fixed position strategy to ensure visibility of the drop-down even if the input inside a container with overflow hidden. Also, we inform the floating UI about the drop-down's open state, we refrain from allowing it to alter the option state. This is because I found managing the open state more straightforward without depending on the library. To create a slight gap between the input and the dropdown, we add an offset of 4 pixels. We also employ the size middleware to dynamically adjust the dropdown width 
to match the input fields with. To display the dropdown, we require that the label container has focus within it. While the focus within CSS selector is an option, our components code benefits from having a variable for the state. Therefore, we utilize the use has focus within hook. This hook takes a ref of the element and implements focus in and focus out event listeners. When the element receives focus, we set the is focus state to true. Conversely, when focus is lost, we verify if the newly focused element is outside the ref element. If so, we update the is focus state to false. We then employ the use effect on dependency change hook to control the visibility of the options, showing them when the label gains focus and hiding them when it loses focus. To guarantee that this behavior is triggered exclusively in response to changes in a label has focus within, make use of the use effect on dependency change hook from ReactKit. This hook operates in a manner akin to the use effect hook, but it's specifically tailored to activate only when its dependencies change. To hide the option when the escape key is pressed, we use the use key hook from React Use. The use list navigation hook is instrumental in enabling keyboard navigation among the items in the dropdown. Notably, Floating UI takes care of auto scrolling, ensuring that the currently selected item is always visible within the dropdown. To supply the use list navigation hook with the list of items, we utilize the options referee. For improved accessibility, the use role hook is employed to set the role attribute on the dropdown container. Furthermore, the use interactions hook amalgamates these functionalities, providing get reference props, get floating props, and get item props functions. These functions are crucial for attaching the necessary event handlers and attributes to the corresponding elements. When the value is already selected and the dropdown is open, we show all the options, otherwise we rely on the get suggestions helper. When the value is already selected and the dropdown is open, we show all the options, otherwise we rely on the get suggestions helper. It will lowercase the input value and search through the options. If the options name start with the input value, it will be added to the primary match survey. Otherwise, if the options name include the input value, it will be added to the secondary match survey. Finally, we concatenate the two arrays and return the result. If the user types in the input, the onText input change function is activated. This function performs several key actions. It ensures that the dropdown remains open, clear the current value if it does not correspond to the name of the selected option, and update the text input value state. To enable users to select the highlighted item in the dropdown, we add an onKeyDown listener to the label container. When the Enter key is pressed, we first stop the event propagation to prevent form submission if the input is within a form. If an item is highlighted and the Enter key is pressed, we execute the onChange callback with the selected option, reset the active index state, and subsequently hide the dropdown. To improve the user experience, we bring the focus back to the input field on a click within the label container. That's all. If you found this combo box breakdown useful, please like and subscribe. Become an effective 10x programmer with my productivity app at increaser.org.